Hi, welcome to Tooling Around. Today, I'm going to give you a glimpse at what it's like to spend a day on a kickstart-only bike. Yeah, and this episode is proudly sponsored by Doc Bailey Cranes and Equipment. Construction is back, and I'm proud to give a lift to the hard-working men and women building our communities. I'm Doc Bailey of Doc Bailey Cranes and Equipment. 25 year industry veteran providing cranes and bucket trucks. We are always reliable, always confident, and if there's a problem, we'll never leave you hanging. We service everything we rent and provide some of the best operators. So call Doc Bailey, 888 Doc Bailey or 888 docbailey.com. Welcome back. Okay, this thing is stone cold. You know, see, I can touch everything here. There's the front pipe. Haven't touched it gonna give this a shot okay so basically what I do is get the key I leave it off okay then I <coughs> give it a couple prime kicks it's more to warm me up than it is the bike okay then turn the key on enrich it a little bit of gas here we go. Yep, first thing in the morning, better than 24 hour fitness. Come on, baby. Nothing. baby don't you want to go Whoop, hurt a little gas <sighs> 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 on on. I got electricity. <sighs> Welcome to the world. <sighs> there you go. Okay, let's go get some gas. Well, there you go, the early morning workout. Now I got about two drops of gas in this tank. It's one of the other things I gotta get used to with this chopper. This tank is like two and a half gallons, so little different than the five gallon tanks I'm used to, you know? I just checked my gas before I left and ah, I'm riding on Elvis, baby. So, let's see if we can make it. At least it's light enough that I could push it, you know? But the gas station's right there. I usually go to the Heli gas station, which is a little further away, but I'm going to have to go to this one because it's closer. Hey, I made it. No 
Okay. Uh. Tell you one thing, when you kickstart, it's so hard to turn it off. <laughs> it's like, what if I could leave it running while I put this gas in? But you know what? I'm just going to go for it. So uh, let's put some gas. This might come in handy. What do you think? Key on, little gas. bad okay let's go to the post office oh So on the way to the post office here, I thought I would comment on Polaris deciding to pull the plug on Victory Motorcycles. Well, as I understand it, back in 2000, Polaris actually tried to buy Indian Motorcycle. And Indian Motorcycle said, no, nah, I think we're going to try to go it alone. And Polaris said, well, okay, then we'll just start our own company, and they created Victory. Now, fast forward to a few years ago when um, Polaris got Indian. Yeah, they finally bought them, and all the people who were selling um, Victories suddenly were selling Indians too. So, that they decide to drop Victory you know, and favor Indian makes a lot of sense if you know a little bit about that history and if that history is true. Now, I remember there was a, a Diet Coke years ago. I forget what it was called, a Fresco or Tab or something that you don't hear about anymore. And Coca-Cola owned the brand and they just couldn't get this Diet Coke to fly off the shelf. So what they did was they killed the brand and renamed it Diet Coke. And then, of course, everybody knew the brand, and Diet Coke was a big seller and an enormous success for Coca-Cola. And I tell that story because I think that's a little bit of what's going on with the Indian uh, victory thing. They said, hey, let's, let's go with the brand that's the strongest. Now, you hear all kinds of things. You know, it wasn't profitable. But I think it's, it wasn't profitable enough. You know, because they held on to that thing for 18 years, man. So, I think that when they saw Indian sales just taking off, they said, hey, let's concentrate on the ones that's working. Let's rename it Diet Coke. Now, they didn't rename it, of course. What they're going to do is take all the resources from um, Victory and put it toward Indian, which makes a lot of sense. Now, you're talking to somebody who rode a Victory cross country for three years. I love the bike. They're great bikes. If there's any downside to these bikes, number one, the resale value doesn't seem to be there. At least it wasn't there for me. And also, if you try to modify one and make it a chopper or do anything cool with it, um, other than just leave it stock and add stuff from Arlen Ness, there's not much you can do with it, right? 
I mean, I love the motor when it's sitting in the stock pipe, but put it in a chopper and it looks like a transistor, you know? Okay, here we are at the post office. And I gotta turn this bike off again. Ah! And I gotta pick some place that it would be easy to kick for me. Oh, don't pull in there, I want that spot. Ah! Bummer. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over here. It's funny when you do this kind of stuff. <clears throat> it's like you have to figure, okay, you know, I want to be facing slightly uphill. You know, here we go, turning it off again. Ah! Okay. Ah. Let's go check my post office box. Okay. Go again. wasn't so bad. Now, when I leave this post office, I got a little trick because there's a, like a thousand speed bumps over here. I'll go show you. Usually I go this way because there's a little break in the speed bumps. But here, look at how many there are. So I have to go on the side like this. go a little quick video on kicking it not that bad and I'm getting better at it you know I'm uh, getting a little stronger which is the reason I'm doing it right and you gotta imagine you know when you see that shot of me I have to kick it and then stop it and then go back and get that camera so every time you saw me kick it I actually kicked it two times ah. what we do for our art and you Thanks for watching.